Hello, I am slightly less dead now, so I can answer the question, how do you start your scripts? And by that, I don't mean how do you will yourself to start your script, because that's my next video. But now that you have all your ideas ready, we're ready to discuss what happens at the very beginning of your comic. What do you put as your very first scene? Um, the honest answer is that if you edit your script, it's definitely not going to be what you first thought your first scene was going to be, and it's going to get changed like a million times. But still, at some point, you have to decide on an opener, in which case, what is a good way to start? And what is a good way to do that? To make this simple, I'm going to talk about three options. They're not the only options and they totally overlap on each other. But to make things simpler, we're just going to focus on three and what they can do for you and how to use them effectively. Uh, the first I'll be discussing is an omniscient prologue. The second is a tangential prologue. And the third is no prologue at all we're just going in so the first we have is the omniscient prologue this is where a narrator opens your story and we see a bunch of images as the world is explained to us this is how the lord of the rings movies start how undertale starts it's basically pretty standard for high fantasy big concept stories though it is less common in novels because it got so misused that a lot of readers ended up starting to skip these prologues entirely and just not reading them and then they defeated their point point. and that basically leads me into how this omniscient prologue is used the omniscient prologue is an efficient way of getting through necessary concepts that the reader needs to know first in order to understand the story and that is the key word efficient. When you're adding this type of prologue, you are doing so because it's the fastest way to get essential information to the reader, usually information that would be already obvious to the character in said world, or information that the character won't learn for a long time, but the reader needs to know first anyways. So let's look at our examples. In the Lord of the Rings movies, the first movie opens with an explainer of the creation of the One Ring. That's it. It's basically like, okay guys, before we start the story, you need to know that an evil guy made a bunch of rings. Some went to elves, some went to dwarves, some went to men, and then he made a super secret special evil ring for himself. And that leads into a tangential prologue, a few tangential <laughs> prologues, honestly, and I'll explain that in the next bit, but that is basically the Lord of the Rings omniscient opening. The next one of our examples is Undertale. The prologue is only like a couple of sentences, honestly, and it gets across the point very fast that monsters and humans had a war, humans won, monsters got sealed in the ground, and now our story can begin. The trick to these is not to overload them. You know, these are very simple amounts of information, especially when you consider the later complexities of both stories, honestly. So if there is something you are struggling to explain quickly, this is a great way to do it. This does end up classing as telling instead of showing, which is fine. So like when you're making a judgment call um, to add a prologue, consider sort of the following. Does having a fleshed out scene of Sauron forging rings and giving them away benefit my story at all? Does a war between humans and monsters need to happen in depth? Or is the implication enough? If you end up disagreeing with the choices that were made in these two instances, then you say yes, and then you start looking into tangential prologues instead. So what are these? These are where your story opens with a scene relevant to your story, but not directly connected to the beginning of your main character's story. Um, this can be a snapshot of the future, a scene from a side character, a scene from, a, from the past, maybe a villain's opening, anything. Um, they're more fleshed out. Uh, than a omniscient prologue, and they operate usually like a scene or short story. Um, why use something like this? Well, these are used to show what your story is going to be about. So let's say you're writing a thriller, but the beginning half of your story is all build up and not very thrilling at all. Well, if you start with a scene of a monster doing a murder or um, a crime scene or anything like that, that isn't going to be discovered until later in your story, then you can show your readers at the beginning that things are going to happen. While not like a straight up opener, the section that follows Lord of the Rings 
uh, the Lord of the Rings omniscient opening is a great example of this. Um, another example is Gurren Lagann's opening. For Lord of the Rings, it continues from that omniscient opening into a battle scene with humans and elves trying to destroy that one ring. And you know how that goes, if you know. <laughs> and sort of like the entirety of the battle both gives more context for the story and world, but it also gives a better taste of what to expect later in the story and where things are kind of headed. So later in the story, like at the actual beginning where you're just kind of chilling with hobbits, the rest of the story is kind of less jarring because you know that battles and epicness are on their way. Gurren Lagann, very similar to that. Instead of looking into the past, it looks into a future scene, giving a glimpse of just how out there things are going to get in the story. There may be a lot of crossover between these two types of prologues, and like I've noted, you'll sometimes have both of them going on. They basically exist on a spectrum, but it's very good to be aware of both extremes of it. Um, the final way to begin a story is through the first logical scene of your story. Like, <laughs> this works best if your story isn't going to take any major shifts, or if your first scene will have foreshadowing to anything major. So, Gilmore Girls, Dream Daddy, man, I should really read more comics so I have comic examples instead of just other visual storytelling type stories. But either way, Dream Daddy, Gilmore Girls, neither of these stories need to open up with epic prologues because they pretty much start as they are and continue as they are. In all cases, whatever you do with your opening, you're looking to create something engaging. Uh, I'll definitely talk about this sort of stuff in the future, but the basics of it are if you plan on making a story about cool sword fights, open with cool sword fights. If you want something that's going to be slice of life and cute, open with something slice of life and cute. Your opening should be an example of your best foot forward, um, a sample of the great stuff that the rest of your story will have to offer. And don't forget to make it visually interesting. You are writing a visual story. Think about how things are going to look, even in the scripting phase, because you can change things to make them a lot more interesting. And that's half the reason why you guys, us guys, us comic guys, can still write omniscient prologues and novels can't, because we can make them still look cool, even if we're just straight up... <laughs> You know, like that kind of information is vegetables, and we're allowed to just jam vegetables into our our readers' mouths. So yeah, hooray for vegetables. Um, what was I saying? Um, yeah, novels they can't get away with vegetables. So at least make your vegetables beautiful. Anyways, um, but like I said, all of this stuff applies to all of your scenes. So I'm definitely going to talk about that later. And if you're writing something right now and you learn a better way to do it later in these things, then you can edit it and you're going to be okay because you're not drawing your comic before you've written your scripts because you don't want to hurt me. Okay, so there we go. Man, why was this script so long but so easy to read out to you guys? Um, all right, see you guys on Tuesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Oh no, oh, Tuesday is a big day. Um, I should record on Monday then. Okay, goodbye. That's sorry, mumbles. <laughs>